Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to go over how to install Hack5 C2 on your Debian or Ubuntu virtual machine. In my case, we will be using Ubuntu 20.04 and it is a clean machine, nothing's been done to it, so if you follow this guide uh, on a fresh new machine, we'll be at the same steps the entire time. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to update, upgrade, and clean our packages. So the first command is going to be sudo apt-y update. And if you don't know, the dash y is to say yes to everything. Uh, and and sudo apt-y upgrade. And and sudo apt-clean. Make sure you put the sudo in there if you're not running as root. Put in your password and let it go and do its thing. Uh, just a couple tips and tricks. Uh, the dash Y, like I said previously, lets you say yes to all the yes, no questions. And the double ampersands, what it says is if the previous command succeeds, not fail, continue on to the next command. So as you can tell, uh, fresh machine, but it's already updated by Google, so nothing to do. Uh, the next step will be to install the required packages. Uh, there's only going to be two required packages. One's unzip to unzip the file that we're going to get from Hack5's download. And UFW, uh, if you are on a machine that does not have certain packages installed, such as like a minimal install. So what we're going to do is we're going to do sudo apt-y install unzip and UFW. All right, so now we have sudo apt-y install. So we have unzip and UFW installed. The next part, what we'll have to do is open the ports that we need. In my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow every single port that is listed for this installation. You do not need to open every port. So make sure you read their guide, you reference what ports you'll need. Some ports, such as 8080, uh, are necessary Actually, I think it might be 80, but they're necessary for cert bot to actually uh, authenticate your cert, uh, which is kind of weird because if you have, you know, uh, SSL cert in there, uh, well, I guess you're technically earning it, so you don't have it just yet, but it, it does need it to authenticate, so make sure you have that port open. So what we're going to do is we're going to type sudo ufw allow 22, 2022, 80, 8080, and 443. And since we are doing multiple ports, we have to clarify whether or not it's UDP or TCP. We're going to be doing TCP. And then we're going to add a second command, which will enable our firewall, and a tertiary command to reload all the rules for that firewall. And we're going to type yes, and we're good to go. All right. And now step four, what we're going to do is we're going to download and unzip the community zip files in the temporary directory. So the first thing we're going to type is sudo wget, and we're going to copy and paste the download link. And we're going to clarify where we want it to go, which will be the temp community file. That's what that uh, flag is for. And then we're going to Tell it to unzip the file into the temp file. And there we go. So what that did is it downloaded it into the uh, temp community directory and unzipped it into the temp file. And then uh, I believe it removed it. I'm not sure. Still there. Okay, good. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to move the C2 community files to the user local bin, and then we're going to uh, create the required database directory. Okay, so we're going to type sudo move temp C2 community. Uh, so I'm using 64-bit Linux, so we're going to do Linux 64. All right. Obviously, there's stuff for uh, ARM version 7, 8, Windows 32, or 64. Darwin or Linux ARM. Make sure uh, if you're on Debian or Ubuntu running 64-bit that you use the C2 community Linux 64. 
And now we're going to clarify where we want that to go, which is user local bin. And we're going to create a new directory in the variable folder called hack5c2. Awesome. So if we do ls temp, we should see that that file is now moved. And you can notice that there is no Linux uh, 64 in there. All right, so the next part, what we're going to do is we are going to create our uh, systemd service. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do sudo vim slash etsy systemd system, and we're going to call this hack5 service. Uh, you can name this wherever you want. Just make sure you actually, if you do change this, that you set that change into your template. So as you can tell, we have a blank template. Uh, in the guide, I list three different templates. Uh, one is for you know just locking it to port 80. Uh, one's doing just HTTP, and then one's doing HTTPS. Uh, so we're going to use uh, template A, which is HTTPS, and I'm going to copy and paste that, just like that. So as you can tell, everything's in there. Okay. So if you're going to switch your service name, just make sure you update it right there. Okay, and then all we have to do is right quit and save. I'm just going to get a couple of seconds so you know what to do. Actually, I'm sorry, we need to set our host name. So I actually allocated a domain address for this, and we're going to do hack5.void-byte.com. And so remember, when we originally moved that database, we set its location, and then here's where it's going to be saved for now on. All right, that's a very important part because if you don't set where your database is, it's going to look in the root directory first, and it's not going to be there. All right, awesome. So we have our template built for system D. We are now going to uh, reload the system D daemon enable the service and then start it. So we're going to sudo system control daemon reload okay and if that succeeds we're going to sudo system control enable our new service called hack5 right and if that succeeds we're going to sudo system control start our hack5 service right all right and then we can do sudo system control status hack5.service just to make sure everything is actually running correctly. And as you can tell, good to go, perfect. And we have a setup token right here. And you're going to need that setup token to authorize uh, yourself on your website. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull up Google Chrome. So as you can tell, uh, I already have it preloaded. It's not finding it just yet. Let's uh, see if it's up just yet. Give it a couple minutes. It takes a bit. Uh, if if it's a fresh domain or you're using uh, a domain name provider that's a little bit slower than normal, give it at least an hour or two. Uh, if you're doing Google domains or GoDaddy, you should be ready in about a couple minutes to about 15 minutes. Uh, so here, you're going to put that new token you just got. You can create a new uh, username. Give it a password. Accept the, the EULA Terms of Service. Uh, your license key. Uh, so when you originally sign up to actually get the download link and all that stuff, a license key will be emailed to you. And once that's emailed to you, you can copy and paste that in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my email. Uh, I'm not going to let you see my access key, obviously. I'm going to grab my key. I'm going to switch you over to something to where you can't see it. Put in my key. Save that. And now it will give us a login window. And we can log in. And there you go. You are now 
in your own Hack5 Cloud C2. And this is a community edition. And you can go ahead, you can add your devices, do whatever you want. And I mean, really, that's it. Uh, if you have any issues, check the Hack5 forums. Uh, a lot of people can walk you through. Uh, and check the uh, description of this video. I will have a link to my guide, uh, both at my personal website and on the Hack5 website. Uh, and I can answer questions for you as well. And uh, just give me a like, subscribe, and thanks again for watching this video. Goodbye.